fully polished flint axe. Well, I reckon I've uh, got a little story to tell about this. And um, at the same time, what we'll do is we'll produce an axe from this. And what we have right here, so we have another, this is a green stone axe. And this here is an actual Neolithic polished polishing stone. All round these edges are hammered all along here. That's called pecking. That's where they actually took the axe and they hammered along the edges to try and get these bits nice and nice and soft. And then this face here and this face here, they're smooth and dished out where people used to run the axe backwards and forwards to bring about a polish. And this all happened around about four and a half thousand years ago. So, it takes around about 100 hours to polish an axe properly using sand and a big stone like that called a polissoir. And um, it should take about half an hour to actually make the axe maybe a little bit shorter but anyhow I thought you might enjoy the process now excuse me wonky glasses right now you can imagine four and a half thousand years ago life would have been quite a lot different and um, there wouldn't have been room to carry people in the tribes that um, weren't capable of doing the things that were required and um, uh, were potentially lazy. Everyone needed to pull in and everyone needed to skill. So, there was a particular tribe and they had a way of dealing with that very problem. And also this connects up with another problem and the problem being is that in our time, you're a child until you get to the age of 18. When you get to 18, you suddenly become an adult. Well, there's a few problems with that. Because if you don't really know what constitutes the arrival of the word adult, how can you possibly be one? How has anything changed apart from at one particular day. Well, what it really comes down to is it comes down to the knowledge that you have of yourself, that you're capable of self-sufficiency and living in the wilderness. And um, when you become capable of that, you see through a different set of eyes. You're no longer running around needing, 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 needing. What you do is you apply, you gather, you stalk, you hunt, you fish, you trap, and um, you become an upstanding, self-recognizing member of a community. So, in this particular um, tribe, what they did is at the age, tender age of 11 years old, primarily for the boys this one was, there would be a calling of a big horn. And um, I'll show you. It would go a bit like this. tribe would come, the whole tribe, and they'd all gather outside the chief's hut and there'd be one particular person on this occasion we'll call this little boy Todd. So Todd come along, this is his 11th birthday, if you read his mum's face she was looking pretty terrified but she knew the ways of the tribe 
and Dad was standing there giving his son some encouragement and telling his son that everything was going to be all right because this day hadn't just come. There'd been a lifetime of preparation, forging of the relationships between the people who held the skills and the investment into the children to make sure that the children were strong and knowledgeable and understood the ways. And there would be a big feast, big venison cooked, lots of merriment, lots of girls dancing around this young man, or ready to become a young man. And in advance of this, one of the flint nappers would have actually made what we call a rough out axe, which is an axe which has all the flake scars on it, but is ready to be ground. And um, so the merriment would take place and, uh, and then at some point in the evening the horn would be blown once more. This is when everyone would go quiet. The chief wearing his big mask would come out and he'd look at the boy and down on the floor, on the summons in stone, would be the axe, the freshly napped axe. And he would uh, tell the boy that this was called the inspection stone. He was to take the axe from that place and he was to leave camp. And um, then a third horn was blown. And uh, a third horn was blown and everybody in the camp, including the chief, got down on their hands and knees, looked at the earth. And the reason for this is because the boy no longer existed in their eyes. He was no longer there. And to actually see this boy with your naked eye would bring a terrible curse onto the camp. And uh, almost certainly a death to the whole tribe. So he was cast out to the grey lands into the wilderness and this boy would go off he would run from camp literally run because the last thing he wanted to do was have anybody look up and see him and he knew there was a long journey ahead of him and he knew there was lots of wild animals out there that could potentially hurt him and um, off he would go the first big thing he's got to conquer was getting through his first night in the wilderness, in the darkness, all by himself. But he'd been preparing, you know, he had a backpack which had lots of little bits and pieces in. He had some dried, um, dried berries, fruits, nuts, and he had some dried meat. So he had a few things to keep him going for a short period of time. Because going out there with nothing would just be stupid. He also had his knife and he had a spear and he had a bow and arrow. And off he would go and he would go several miles from the camp. In fact, he would go as far away as he could get just so that none of the hunters actually bumped into him by accident. And that night he would have to sit there, find somewhere suitable for a camp and try and set up a makeshift shelter, collect his firewood and get a fire going. And he'd also have to be observant on the way of all the different things that were there that were going to be helpful to him. The animal tracks, the types of plants, the type of season it was. And this would go on. 
And there would be times where the wolves would come because the wolves would smell the weakness and the individualization and they would want to hunt him and eat him as well. And along the journey, every day when he got a chance, he would spend as much time as he could grinding the axe, grinding it nice and smooth and getting it ready to return to the camp. Now as the time went by, each one of the boy's achievements, catching himself a small animal, skinning it, preparing the skin, keeping the skin, adding on to his shelter, building the shelter, keeping the fire going, learning about the different timbers, ones that would stay in overnight, ones that would burn brightly when he needed the company. But as the days went by, his isolation and he would become much more associated. He would feel much less stranded. And he would actually start understanding the dependency that he could finally place in himself. He would see his reflection in the water. He would notice the development of the different muscles on his body. Then he would see the reflection of his face growing stronger, less terrified by the daunting concept of living alone in the wild. And this would go on and on, maybe, If you think about it, I've got a hundred hours. You can't do that all in one go. A regular person only normally goes to work for 40 hours a week. So that's two and a half weeks. But really, the amount of time he'd have, you'd have to spread that, uh, spread that over about six weeks to fully grind the ax. Now it comes to a point where he felt that he was comfortable and the axe was done. And uh, he couldn't just go running back to the camp because the curse that was on him, axe or no axe, would still be there. And can you imagine even the probability of losing the axe? He was depending on the axe to ever be accepted by the tribe again. And um, so, what he had to do is he had to creep back to the camp and he would be watching it from the line of the forest from afar. And he'd watch the evening get dark. He'd watch the campfires be built up. He'd see everybody running around but he would lay still and he waiting in the dark. There would be dogs running around barking. All the things that he'd come to learn and love throughout his whole life was this community of people that were built out of strength and understanding of their position in nature. And... Um, He'd wait there until every fire had burnt out and all the lights had gone out. And now he's got a bit of a problem because he's got to sneak back into a camp which is full of people who are hunters, warriors. The dogs are there casting warnings if anything came into camp like a bear. He had to sneak past all of that. But that wasn't so bad, because while he was hunting, he learned to silent walk by twisting his ankles just slightly as he walked over onto the edge of the outside of the foot. He can move and walk with complete silence. He'd learned that praying and um, sneaking up on animals not to make a sound. 
And finally, he got to the point where the inspection stone was. And there was always a little light burning just here because they knew he'd come back sometime. Or they hoped he would. Some of them didn't make it back. Some of them actually got consumed by the wilderness. And laying by the inspection stone was the horn. And so he picked up the horn and he blew it once. <laughs> And um, a minute or so went by, then he could hear the footsteps, so he got down on his hands and knees and put his face to the earth so that the uh, shaman chief didn't look him in the face before the curse was lifted. And um, the chief came in wearing his big horned hat and he bent down and he picked up the axe and he felt the axe all over and he rubbed it then he put the axe back on the stone and he went over to the boy and he held the boy by each side of his face. And he looked at him deeply in the eyes. He looked real deep in his eyes. He said, good, which is gone. The boy had gone. And now a man stood before, stood before the chief. And in the boy's eyes, there was strength. There was a knowledge that now he could add into that tribe and be a valuable member. And um, all around the chief's camp, people had been preparing. They'd been sitting there with their iron parietes, striking and getting their little tinder bundles ready to light their fire sticks. And the chief said to the boy, is it your wish to be a member of this tribe and contribute? to this clan and the boy said it is so the chief picked up the horn blew the horn and from all around you could see fire sticks coming people with lights fires from every direction walking in the whole tribe descended around the encampment and the chief held up the boy's hand and he said to the tribe, he has returned. He has returned a man. He chooses to share his hearth within the camps, within our tribe. And, um, and now is time for him to pick his woman and pick his hearthstone and begin his own family within this tribe. And from all around, everyone went, hurrah! And they all drank and danced around the fire in merriment. And there was more girls paying for his attention because they knew he was a worthy man. And he knew that he'd gone through that exchange from being a boy, going into nature and coming home, a healthy, whole individual. I didn't quite finish the axe, but um, it was more about the story I wanted to tell you. I'll send you a photo of the axe when I'm done. Cheers for watching. You've been watching Warlord. All the best.